Okay, so James, what have the last five years been like for Builders of Hope? So in the past five years, Builders of Hope has experienced exponential growth, both in terms of the partnerships that we've uh, brought together, in terms of the people that we've impacted, um, and specifically in terms of the projects that we've uh, completed. We have expanded our geographical service area um, to include Dallas County um, by being awarded a CHODO certification through Dallas County. So um, before we were only serving two to three communities within the city of Dallas. Now our geographical service area includes all of Dallas County. We have a diverse mix of projects in our pipeline, including multifamily development, um, as well as a few subdivisions um, so that we can uh, get economies of scale. So we have grown um, and that is thanks partly to the partnerships that we've been able to garner, the people who have believed in our vision of transforming Dallas um, by creating thriving neighborhoods and quality affordable homes for all incomes. Um, so we're grateful. Um, it's been a lot of hard work um, and we're, we're grateful for where we are. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your professional journey. How do you arrive at this place? Absolutely. So my background is in banking and finance. I spent a number of years at JPMC um, working in uh, the high clientele, high net worth uh, department, uh, managing a portfolio of high net worth individuals. Um, I tell people that I got involved in housing because I had a Nehemiah experience. One day I was driving down Canada Drive looking at West Dallas and began to weep over the broken walls of my city. Um, that's why I started to get involved. I was appointed uh, the mayor's chair of the Housing Finance Corp um, with the city of Dallas, a board that really gives you um, the grassroots understanding of how uh, complex housing finance can be. Um, Chris Lewis, who serves as our Chief Operating and Housing Development Officer currently serves on that board. So my background is in banking and finance, but I always had a community perspective, right? Um, when I came to West Dallas back from college and wanted to get involved, the first thing that my grandfather asked me to do was clean the toilets at the church. So that's where I got my start, um, went on to work with awesome organizations like Second Saturday that um, did home repairs for seniors, was on their board for quite a while. So although I come from corporate America, my start is very much from the bottom up. So what's new, what's new, what's going on new with Builders? So you, you mentioned that you guys have a lot of new partners and a lot of new projects. So tell me a little bit about those. So one of the most exciting things that I'm, uh, so glad to announce is that we've brought on uh, Chris Lewis as our Chief Operating and Housing Development Officer. Um, and that just speaks to our capacity, uh, speaks to our growth. It speaks to um, just our leadership in this space, um, that we're able to attract some of the brightest minds of our city to help lead our efforts uh, towards our mission of transforming Dallas. Okay. So, so Chris, Sounds like James is the OG of the group. So tell me a little bit about the, <laughs> the obstacles you may have seen since you arrived at the organization. Um, yeah, so James has done a really good job of uh, scaling up the organization. And, you know, by the way, through our friendship and the work he's been doing uh, professionally and within the community, um, I was gracious with the opportunity to come in and support as we're scaling up. Um, we have over like 291 units in our pipeline. So just some kind of my job and role is just to come in and improve the processes and uh, within the organization and somewhat overseeing the housing development from in infill development all the way to um, occupancy. So um, I'm thrilled to do that. Um, my background is engineering. So, you know, my role uh, objective is to bring in more of a te technical background, uh, project management, as well as kind of understanding, you know, kind of what's going on um, through that development process. So, James, a lot of times in our community, these types of projects aren't well received. They're kind of mm -hmm. like get a lot of pushback, a lot of doubt. Tell me, how, how have yours, how's this project been received? What have you seen over the last five years? Has the community been receptive to it? Well, I mean, what have you seen? So I would say the community is pretty open to the projects that we bring to the community. 
it's because we start there. And I think that's a vital uh, point that all developers have to realize is that when you're developing in Southern Dallas, it's not you inviting the community to the table because it is their table. Um, you have to understand that and ask permission for a seat at their table. And that's what we call equitable community development. It's community development that's done in a way that puts the communities first. Every single one of our project is an answer to a community need, whether it's our South Dallas project that is revitalizing an area that has slightly higher crime rates than other parts of the city, or West Dallas, where we are stabilizing the housing market by bringing in affordable housing at a price point below what the market is bearing, or if it's our Farmers Branch Project, where we're providing workforce housing to uh, individuals that the market has priced out of that area. All of our projects are an answer to a community need. And if you do community development that way, then you won't have problems with uh, the community not wanting what you're bringing because you're literally bringing what they ask for. Chime in, bro, if you want to say that, yeah. <laughs> it's the uh, trust issues in the black community we have. You've seen, since you came on board, I know James has one perspective. Tell me yours. Have you seen any mistrust in the black community thinking, you know, we're stuck on paradigms, wanting to be aware the way it was, and they want to see something before they really trust it. Have you seen anything like that? Uh, absolutely. I mean, one thing, you know, James and I, we're kindred spirits. We're both Dallas natives. We, we grew up in the poorest parts of the city, and, you know, we left out, you go to college, you know, me serving in the military and coming back is that, you know, now we're mixing our purpose and passion, but also, you know, revitalizing our communities. A lot of times you see that there's mistrust with private developers coming in because as James mentioned, they're not talking to the community. And one, they're not building quali quality, sustainable housing. The one of the best things that Builders of Hope does is that not only we take the insight from the community, we build quality housing. So it's not all, you know, the same, different elevation, different renderings, like it matches and improves in community. Um, so by improving that trust, you know what I mean, and providing beautification projects, you know what I mean, having them inputs to see, you know, what they like, you know, once the foundation is poured, you know, one thing that we do internally is that we work with the home buyer. They pick and choose certain upgrades, certain amenities, so they feel like they're a part of the process. Even though, you know, we like to use the word affordable housing, but it's just really beautiful homes that you wouldn't even think is affordable. That's a very good point, uh, Chris, because not a lot of affordable home builders offer that semi-custom experience. And that just speaks to our drive to make everything we do all about the community that we serve. Um, in addition to our affordable housing projects, we also have four different community transformation initiatives. Our West Dallas Vision Plan, which is a neighborhood plan that prioritize neighborhood needs and concerns so that when disruptive development comes into the neighborhood, um, planning commissioners have a plan that they can look at to understand what the community wants their community to look like. We're also completing a Mill City Public Safety Initiative where we are remediating blight um, in the southeast portion of Dallas. We're also doing a home repair program for seniors in West Dallas. We understand that home repair is one of the most efficient, cost-effective ways to uh, secure affordable housing in areas that are going through fast-paced gentrification. So we're also doing what we call an anti-displacement toolkit for the city of Dallas. We all know of the natural phenomenon of black and brown communities being displaced by disruptive development and what we call gentrification or urban renewal. Um, we stood up um, to lead in this space and we're completing a toolkit that will be done this year. The good thing about this toolkit is that it will be adopted as policy so that after this toolkit is passed um, by council, uh, all housing policy will have an anti-displacement lens. And that's what really what we are called to do, not just build bricks and sticks, but how do we also build strong, thriving communities where everyone will have a place to live? So there's a stigma that with the word affordability. How do you overcome that? Because affordability, where I come from, is just a, another word for you can't, you can't afford the regular stuff. You know what I mean? So and it's how you guys are building custom homes. Yeah. The stigma attached to the word affordability. So how do you overcome that? Because when you hear it, it's like, okay, 
almost like projects. Right. But <laughs> right. You're, you're not building projects. I've seen some of the work you guys are doing. Those yeah. Aren't you know, I, I, I would say that affordability is relative, um, depending on that person's income. Uh, if a person is paying more than 30% of their monthly income towards housing expenses, we call that housing cost burden. Even if you're a millionaire, you're paying more than 30% of your monthly income and housing expenses, you are housing cost burden. That means what the house that you are living in, you cannot afford. And so by that standard, everyone needs affordable housing. Um, but I would like to think that we are reshaping what affordability looks like in low-income communities, because we believe that no matter where you are and where you live, no matter what side of the railroad track that you live on, you deserve something safe and something that is of quality. You deserve an asset and not something that will be a future liability. And just to add on to that, I think redefining what, what affordability means, you know, a lot of times it has that um, segment, segmentation that, you know, it's the projects of Section 8. A lot of times we're knowing now, like teachers, firefighters, they came in for, for, you know, nice housing. And as the, you know, within the African-American community, more people can access to money and trying to figure out how can we help them understand the true value of home ownership and what that looks like. Um, so, you know, when you put all that together, you know, I mean, now, you know, with we're doing with Bills of Hope and working with majority, you know, MWBE entities in our constructions is like when they show up on the, in these neighborhoods, they see people that look like them, that represent to them and seeing that capital being reinvested in their neighborhood through funding that we're receiving through not only city municipalities and, and also from the state and federal government, you know, you're kind of reshaping what those funds look like. Typically it looks like building projects that we see throughout Dallas, but no, they equates to home ownership and, you know, one of the leading phrases we use is economic mobility as well. So, okay. So the group is in the house. When they see the house going up there, that's not a project. Right. <laughs> right. So guys, it sounds good. Sounds really good. I really encourage and proud of what you're doing. So how encouraged are you about the state of black home ownership? So we know that this is a cause of concern, right? We know that black home ownership is definitely a cause of concern. Um, because of racially motivated policies of the past, like redlining and Jim Crow, we know that Black Americans started way behind everyone else, right? In fact, today, if you look at the home ownership rates, I believe that Black Americans right now are sitting at 46%, whereas their white counterparts are right at 75%. So that is a huge gap that we have to close because what that gap tells us is that not only is there home ownership issues, but there is also wealth issues because home ownership has always been the leading way to build wealth in this country. So we are at a huge disadvantage and we have to do everything that we can to stress the importance of home ownership in our communities but also systemically uh, attacking barriers that prevent those um, families from becoming homeowners. So you mentioned that home ownership is a cornerstone of wealth pretty much, but right. most black families don't know that. Yeah. So what is your message? How are you getting that message of financial literacy and wealth building literacy out to them? Yeah, I will say for Builders of Hope, CDC, we are an economic mobility center. Um, that's what we do. On average, our homeowners walk in uh, to about $60,000 in equity on day one. For our West Dallas project, an area that is going through fast-paced gentrification, a market that has completely priced out existing residents from becoming homeowners, that project alone will generate over, a, over $2 million of wealth for those homeowners individually that will equate to about $150,000 of wealth uh, for families. That's the only reason why we do what we do is to create economic mobility for those families who have been shut out of the economic mobility process and, and, and promise that our country and even our state gives, right? We know that Texas is, has a booming economy, but the truth of the matter is, is that that prosperity is not being felt by everyone. So we have to do that. We do that through home ownership. There are multiple different ways to do it. Um, home, home ownership is one of the ways that we tackle that. 
Did you want to add something? I'll just add on to that. Um, I guess we could talk about, you know, sustainability. I think BOH has been around for 25 years and we're trying to do now to be in place for another 25 years or even longer. And I believe with our new housing preservation center, like we're building within the community. So not only we're able to scale our support, you know, for some of the endeavors we do from the anti-displacement toolkit, but also, you know, one of the key things that uh, James was leading was the property tax exemption um, seminars that we have. So we have over 120 families come back, you know what I'm saying, the increase in property taxes. Those are some of the programs and initiatives that we're looking to kind of expand on and grow with our new housing preservation center in the heart of um, below 30 in West Dallas. The, the truth of the matter is that it's going to take a multi-pronged approach to close that that disparity, right? So while we're building affordable housing um, that gives instant equity to the homeowner, we're also doing things like Chris just mentioned about property tax uh, mitigation. Um, a lot of our homeowners, they receive their property tax bill and don't even know that number one, you can claim a homestead exemption. And number two, you can actually protest the valuation that you receive. And so doing those things, those teaching, education, we hope to close the gap um, in our city. Is gentrification your biggest concern? You know, investors coming up and just buying up the property and displacing minorities. And do you feel like you're on the clock and you're racing against that? I would say every single day I wake up with the anxiety that another family is being displaced in our communities. It's, it's a burden that I live with. Um, Every single day, uh, I hear a story of a family having to move out of their community because um, because they can't afford the property taxes. Or Chris can mention about families getting multiple calls. Can we sell your, can we buy your house? Can we buy your house? I mean, you want to talk about that? I mean, it's- Yeah, like, so one of the big things is too, you know, I want to be um, an advocate. I don't want my money to be recurring in my neighborhood. So when I moved back from college to the military, I live in the same district. I grew up in District 4. So the things that I've learned over the years and, you know, working, work alongside James and other community leaders, like I want to take that information and share it within my community, within my neighborhood association. So when we talked about gentrification, usually we're not the people that's in control of it. Gentrification is not, not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that when people are not of the community, they have like no interest and no care. This is looking about the monetary gain. So they're not investing. So the things we learned from my past experience being, you know, um, slightly political figures sitting on boards and commissions, learning all that information. It's all about, the key thing is information sharing. And I think a lot of times our communities are not educated in certain areas for us, the things that are affecting our communities that are, are barriers. A lot of times, you know, we're just taking one nail at a time, kind of chiseling away at those barriers. And that's one thing that Builder Hope is definitely doing. Great. Last question, guys. Oh, easy. Easy. Okay. Yeah. So. You've done a great job here in Dallas. It sounds yeah. like you've been doing a great job. You've got big things going on. Are you going to layer this model over to other cities or just stuff you bought folks on here in the DFW area? Chris, you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me. I, I'm going into uh, month three, and James, I'm, uh, we just spoke uh, about the great work we're doing here in, in Austin at a Black Lives Matter symposium. Okay. And I think we're into some people. I think one one lady was from Memphis, and she was asking James, you know, can you bring it to Memphis? Mm -hmm. Um. I would say hopefully that is something in the pipeline that, you know, through our work within our team here that's doing a great job that we can expand. So the short the short answer is yes. The long term, you know, answer is that we're working on it. You know, I, I, I would say just echoing that is, um, you know, we we are in a class of our um, we we wish that there were other peers. Um, that offer the full services that we offer so that we could duplicate our model, model and go somewhere else. But I would say for the next five years, we are solely focused on moving the needle in Dallas County. And then and only then um, will we look at moving it to Houston or Atlanta. And I mentioned those cities, not by coincidence, um, but those are conversations that we are having. People, people are seeing how our model works. They're seeing what we are doing to build thriving neighborhoods, to present, per preserve existing uh, residents. They are seeing that it works and they want a part of it. So we we definitely are exploring that, um, but we want to move the needle here in Dallas first. Yeah, clean your breath, Chuck. Exactly, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys.
Easy peasy. Okay. Yeah.